Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a pumpkin spice latte entirely in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. As always, the color palette is entirely free. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. For this project, we are using my paid set of watercolor illustration brushes as well as my free mono weight brush. So I will leave a link to both of those in the video description as well. So I'm going to create a brand new document that's 50 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi and then we'll get started. Okay we've got our brand new document and let's start off by setting our background color so just tap on your layers hit background color and choose this last color on the first row and now we've got our background color in there. On this first layer we're going to sketch out the shape of our cup so we're going to utilize the symmetry settings for this just to make it a little quicker and easier. So in order to do that hit the wrench up in the corner go to canvas toggle on drawing guide and then hit edit drawing guide down here you're going to choose symmetry and if you hit the options you just want to make sure that vertical is turned on and assisted drawing is turned on i'm going to thicken this up a little bit so you can see it better on screen and then hit done so now whatever i draw on one side will be repeated on the other side i have my sketching pencil selected in my watercolor illustration brush set and i'm just going to use this to sketch out the shape of my cup because then I want to go back in and freehand all of it so it has that more hand-drawn look instead of being perfectly mathematically symmetrical. So this is going to help me get a base for that symmetry. So I'm just going to draw my cup, curve it just a little bit at the bottom, curve it just a little bit up at the top. And then I'm also going to add a lip onto the cup so it reads more like a coffee cup. And then I'm going to put the sleeve on this cardboard cup as well. So this will be the sleeve and this is also where our label is going to go. All right, so once you're happy with your sketch layer, we can reduce the opacity of it. So I'm going to bring this down to like 40% so I can still see it, but whatever I draw on top of it, I'll be able to see even better. And I can turn off my drawing guide now. I don't need this hard line right down the center, so I can just hit my wrench and toggle off drawing guide. And now we're going to create a brand new layer right above our sketch layer. We can label this sketch. The layer right above it, this is going to be our cup. So I'm going to use this very first color on the second row for the main cup. And I'm going to grab my medium paint round brush for this. And what I'm looking at is I'm just going to follow the outline of this, but I don't mind not making it perfectly exact. That way I have that hand-drawn feel that I'm going to carry through everything. So I'm just going to roughly follow it as best I can. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this just because this is my cup, so I want it to be a little bit stronger. So just slide it to the left, choose duplicate, and then you can pinch these two together. And that will make these texture areas just a little less transparent. The next thing we're going to do is add on this lip of the cup. So I'm going to label this one lip. And to help myself see everything better, I can temporarily turn off the visibility of my cup layer. So just uncheck that, and now I'm back to my sketch, but I'm on this lip layer. And this is going to be this darker red color. So it's the second one up at the top, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Follow my sketch layer and trace it. I've got my lip all drawn in and the next thing I want to do is draw in the sleeve but the sleeve is going to be drawn with my mono weight brush. I want this one to be opaque purely opaque. I don't want any texture in it at all because as we layer on our texture, we're going to have the sleeve, we're going to have a sticker, and then we're going to have a pumpkin. So there's a lot of layers on top of other things and having too many textures on top of each other can make things look a little muddy or confusing. So having this base where I'm going to draw things on top of it will give me kind of a clean canvas for the textures that are to come. So that is the thinking behind making this one a solid color versus the watercolor texture. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I can actually put this one between the lip and the cup since it's on top of the cup and I'm just going to label this one sleeve and I'm going to move to my mono weight brush for this. So once again the link to this brush is right in the video description. This is a free brush and I'm going to grab the second color on the second row for this and I can just trace the outline of my sketch and since this is an opaque color I can color drop with this one. Doesn't work the same with the watercolor texture, but since this is a solid color, I can do that. And let me just see how that looks. I think I want to fill in this area a little bit better. 
All right, let's turn our cup back on and now we can turn off our sketch layer. We no longer need it since we've drawn all of our elements. And the next thing we're going to do is put a sticker on our sleeve for our pumpkin label. And I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the sleeve. Just label this one sticker. And I'm going to grab this first color again. And I still have my mono weight brush selected because I want this one to be solid as well. So I'm just gonna draw a circle and then hold it and it'll snap and then you can hit edit shape up here and just choose circle and then you can position it how you'd like and it's a perfect circle which is helpful for centering and look at the scale make sure you're happy with the size of it I'm just going to toggle this down just a little bit so now it's all ready to go for our pumpkin so we're going to create a brand new layer right above the sticker layer and we're going to label this one pumpkin and for our pumpkin we're going to grab the very first color up at the top we're going to return to our watercolor illustration brush set, grab your medium paint round brush, and for your pumpkin, you're just going to draw a skinny oval, and then draw a skinny oval to the left of it. And it's not going to come quite as far down, it's going to stop short a little bit. Another skinny oval, and then another one over here. You can see how I'm starting higher and ending shorter. Do the same thing on the other side that you just did. And now we're to the back of the pumpkin. So we can just do one semicircle there and another one here. Okay, so we've got the base for our pumpkin and now we can add in our stem. So I'm actually going to grab my dark gray color for the stem just so it's a little more obvious. And I'm going to grab my round liner brush up at the top, draw the stem. And then I'm just going to grab my darkest green color, reduce the size of this just a bit. I'm down to 4% and then draw a little bit of foliage. And now we've got our pumpkin on our label. I'm going to tap it down just a little bit so it's a little more centered. And now we're ready to go with the rest of our latte. So the next thing we're going to do is add in some whipped cream to the top of our latte. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very, very top. I'm going to grab my white color, the first color on the bottom row. Let's label this one whipped cream. And I'm going back to my medium paint round brush. And we're kind of going to draw the poop emoji for this, similar shape. And it's okay if you go beyond the cup, just keep drawing and filling it in because you can always resize it later. Once you have your whipped cream, let's move it into place. You can see mine's still too big. I have uniform selected right here, so whenever I scale it down, it's proportional. So my whipped cream is all set. Let's add a sprinkle of cinnamon to it. So in order to do that, we're going to create a brand new layer, label this one cinnamon, and we're going to grab our light brown color right here. So it's the fourth one up at the top and grab your soft bloom stamp. And when you paint with this one, this one's a pressure sensitive brush. So if I press really hard, you're going to get a really big bloom. And if I press really, really light, you can see I have a smaller one. I'm going to reduce the size of this down to like 10% and I can just paint up here softly and I can get some random sizes and then I can also come in and just stamp my own sizes too to fill in any other areas. So I've got that sprinkle of cinnamon up at the top and now I'm going to draw in some cinnamon sticks just to complete the theme here and in order to do that create a brand new layer. This one's going to be cinnamon stick one. And for this one, I'm going to change up the texture a little bit. So I'm going to be using my sketching pencil up here. And we're going to start with the lightest brown color. So you should still have that selected from our dusting of cinnamon on our whipped cream. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle up. Let me make this a little bit bigger. I'm up to 6%. Color this in. Okay, and then up at the top to make it look like a cinnamon stick, I'm gonna reduce the size back down to 4%. So up at the top, I'm just going to paint in a swirl. That way the eye can instantly recognize that this is a cinnamon stick. And now we're going to draw our second cinnamon stick. The second one needs to be beneath the first one, so I'm just going to tap on the layer underneath my first one, create a brand new layer, label this one cinnamon stick two. Okay, I'm going to grab my darker brown color right next to it. And this one's just going to be a little bit off center and a little bit taller. 
Okay, reduce the size of this, add in that swirl. Let's add in just a little bit of shading to this. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top. We'll just call this one shading. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this to multiply. And I'm going to come back to my light brown, but since it has a multiply blend mode, I'll still be able to see it on top of my dark brown. You can see just like that. And I'm going to keep my sketching pencil, but reduce the size of it again down to 3%. And I'm going to make the edges pretty dark, but then lighten them up. So I just have a couple of lines here as it meets the center where there would be a highlight on the stick. And then do the same thing for the light brown one. And then we can reduce the opacity of that if that's feeling too strong. I'm going to bring mine down to about 60% I think would be good. So let's zoom out and see how this is looking. And the next thing we're going to do is add some shading to the very bottom of our cup and then we can add in all of our leafy embellishments to the sides. So I'm going to return back to my mono weight brush for that final shadow underneath the cup. I'm going to tap on my sketch layer because I want it to appear underneath the cup. So create a brand new layer. This one I'm just going to label shadow. This one's going to be the same color as the background. So it's this one but we're going to change the blend mode to multiply so it'll be darker on top of the background. Grab our mono weight brush and then underneath this, we're just going to draw an oval and hold it and wait for it to snap. And then you can add in the color. We can reduce the opacity so it looks like it fits in a little bit better. I'm coming down to like 18% for the shadow size. And then I can just reposition it however I'd like. I can make it skinnier if I'd like. I'm going to move to freeform so I can kind of smush it a bit so it feels flatter. So I've got my cup all set with my shadow. My cup is totally done now. So now we can move on to our embellishments and our lettering and then this will be all done. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top and this is where I'm going to put all those embellishments. And I'm going to start with some leafy doodles and then I'll add in some supporting swirls and dots to the end. So this first one's going to be my main doodles. So I'm going to label this one doodles and I'm going to grab my light gray color for this but I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply because once we start adding in color underneath it that will really highlight those doodle shapes and it'll be a lot easier to see so I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply I'm going to come back into my watercolor illustration brush set I'm going to select my round liner brush and the size of my liner brush is going to be 4% for this and I'm going to turn on my symmetry but I don't need to return back to my symmetry settings all I have to do is turn on drawing assist to my doodle layer and that will take on whatever symmetry settings we were previously using so I can tap on the layer thumbnail and choose drawing assist and now whatever I draw on one side appears on the other side which is exactly what we want. All right if it helps you to have that line down the center it definitely helps me. I'm going to turn that back on by hitting the wrench and then just toggling on drawing guide and that's all we need to do to have that line. I am going to draw the same thing on both sides but I'm going to color things differently. That way it is symmetrical so I save myself a ton of work but I can make it look like it's not symmetrical by using a couple of tricks like changing up the color and then adding some doodles later on that are different on both sides. So I'm going to start off by drawing a large oak leaf over here and then we'll draw another one up here. So I'm using three different leaf shapes for this. The next leaf shape is just going to be a pointed oval and I'm also going to add in a round leaf. So I'm just filling it in but leaving some good space between there because I want to add in some swirls and dots to finish everything off later on. I've got all of my doodles drawn in now. So now I can create a brand new layer because everything I do from here on out is not going to be symmetrical. So I can turn off my drawing guide and you can see that this one has assisted on it, this one does not. That means nothing's going to be repeated on both sides, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to add in those swirls and those dots. So I'm going to start with the swirls first, and I'm going to switch to my darkest gray color, and we're not going to change this to a multiply blend mode. This one's just going to be the darker gray. And I'm just going to add in some swirls on both sides that are not symmetrical, that way your eye sees that this doesn't look symmetrical even though we saved ourselves a bunch of work by having the symmetry settings on. And then I'm going to come to my medium paint round brush and just add in a couple of dots here and there, tiny dots. 
And now we can add in color to everything and then we'll add in our lettering. So for the color, I'm going to create a brand new layer right underneath my doodle layer. And this one I'm just going to label color. And this top layer that we just did, I'm going to label that one swirls. On my color layer, I'm just going to go between a bunch of different colors and paint in the different elements using my medium paint round brush. So I'll start with my darkest red color right here. I'm going to paint in. And the style that I like doing when I'm coloring these in is I don't like being exactly inside the lines so it goes in and outside of the lines and I just like that very hand-drawn look so that's just personal preference totally up to you how you want to color these okay I'm going to switch to my golden yellow color right there All right, next color, I'm going to grab this color right to the left of the yellow. All right, next color is going to be this kind of mint green color. And then the last color is going to be my dark green color. Okay, once you have all of your doodles completed, now we can add in some lettering. So at the very top, I'm going to create a brand new layer, label this one lettering. I'm going to grab my white color down here. I'm going to grab my round liner brush up the very top. The size of this is 5%, and you can just label it whatever you'd like. So that's how to create a pumpkin spice latte directly in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned within this tutorial are right in the video description, including the watercolor illustration brush set, my free mono weight brush, and the free color palette. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every hyphen tuesday.com you can also find me over on instagram my handle is every tuesday if you try this out and post it there i would love it if you tag me thanks so much for watching and i will see you next week